So, it shot at the location where the white Mercedes was found. Why would niggas take the, the Stolo to a spot they be at? Niggas would, niggas would abandon the Stolo at a, at a random area. You're not finna bring a stolen car to your crib that linked to a murder fool. So, I don't know. Tell a nigga get this money. Bread through 20, she keep coming. Fuck you, tie a little mom, keep coming. Send cold, then you finna fuck my stomach. I don't get it gone from Monday to Sunday. I don't know what he said, but it smell like a honey. Running rounds in the gun, baby, bitch, keep coming. Mm -hmm. so I said, I got blue residents in my jeans. My big dog and I hold out a lead. She be calling me back when I leave. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Oh, you said for me, huh? Kennedy, it's your boy. So, Kennedy out the real. Drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, join the family because we live is doing this. All my videos live and tame authentic. I bring nearly live audio too, but ain't nobody else doing this like us. Now, out the real. Long live my nigga Dolph, man. We got the final two hours of Young Dolph. I just reacted to the last 48 hours of King Von. I'm really just going off the recommended videos right now. I ain't gonna lie. And off the comments, next finna be the music. You know what I'm saying? So, we finna knock these videos out. I ain't even finna talk too much. Yo, I told y'all, nigga, we finna, we finna go crazy with this. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel, join the family if you rockin' with me. Yo, let's do it, man. I might start gaming or some shit. I just, I'm just trash. I ain't even gonna lie. I thought I was good at 2K. I was good at 2K20, bro. I'm, I'm trash at this other shit. I just spent like three, four hundred dollars on 2K23. Man, I thought I had the hardest player bill. I, I'm, I grinded my nigga up. I'm doing badge glitches and shit. Man, I get out there on the court, these niggas out here spamming dribble buttons and shooting and turn around, walking off and green smoking ass. I'm like, bro, I turn this shit off, bro. Hey, these niggas, bro, I ain't play this shit all day. Y'all boys, let's get him in. Dang. I might get into something, I don't know what it is yet. Wednesday, November 17th, 2021, Memphis would change forever. It was the day an icon in the city and a legend in the music industry was lost. Born into the world as Adolph Blue. Thornton Jr., he became known by a number of names, mainly Young Dolph, Mr. Paper Route Frank, huh. and the King of Memphis. On that particular Wednesday on November 17th... I ain't gonna lie, man. That nigga Dolph motivated me because Dolph was always talking about... He was on some self-made, telling young niggas, oh, go get you some money, bro. Like, And not even on no crazy, because money is the root of all evil, but... Dolph was just telling, telling young niggas to go be bosses, man. That's why he got, people got a lot of love for Dolph. For that. Dolph was on a special that's like time mission I'm on. I know in the city of Memphis. There was this one bakery that he always loved shopping at and supporting, Makita's Butter Cookies. Dolph always showed love and support for the business on a regular basis. Their bond was that of family. So it's really, it's affecting our family now. Because we do consider Dolph, you know, anytime you walk into there, you know, walk to Makita's, you consider family. When Dolph came here, he was considered a family. Between 10 a.m. to noon, Dolph was riding through the city in his signature. I ain't gonna lie, my boy Dolph had a weird taste, though. Like, he has weird taste and colors. The blue diamonds was hard, I ain't gonna lie. That blue and camo, I don't know, but that camo and orange? That camo and orange so hard. The blue and camo, I don't know about that. Camouflage Corvette. Dolph pulled up to the gas station just a short distance away from Nikita's to put some fuel in his vehicle. At this point, clips of him like the one at the gas station was already on social media. And sure enough, with his vehicle standing out and easily recognizable, Dolph was already in the sights of his pursuers. Leaving the gas station, he pulled into the parking lot of Makita's a little afternoon, getting ready to make his way into the establishment. Little did he know, he was moments away from losing his life. What makes the following events even more chilling is the reason Dolph visited the bakery. Residents of Texas pay That's close crazy. attention. Residents from Texas who earned less than $50,000. Hey, dollars if you're going to be sliding day. in a city like that, man, at least be in some, at least be in another car. Like, ain't nothing wrong with being in your city in your area because people be saying, they be saying, don't go back to your hood. My fault. Niggas die in their hood, for sure. But, like, bro, you can move smart. It's a million cars on the road. Ain't nobody gonna notice you if you want a regular Malibu, Nissan, Altima, windows tinted. Nobody gonna notice you, bro. It's nobody gonna notice you. But when you riding around in your infamous car, camouflages, can't be doing that, bro. He was there to purchase cookies for his mother. 
Without knowing the end was near, he exited his vehicle and entered into Makita's. That was the cue for those plotting on his life. His pursuers pulled up outside and shot up the building. Young Dolph was hit multiple times before they jumped into a white two-door Mercedes Benz right behind Dolph's vehicle, making their escape. Both men had on gloves and masks when carrying out the murder. Their weapon appeared to be a semi-automatic rifle and a handgun. While the killers made their way from the crime scene, Dolph was fighting for his life. And then you could hear my dad, you know, he was just like, stay with me, Dolph, just stay with me, bro. You know, he kept saying it, so that's when we was like, okay, he was Dolph. So. He was hit 22 ah. times ah. in his forehead, temple, face. Ah. And, you know, he was just like, stay with me, Dolph, just stay with me, bro. You know, he kept saying it, so that's when we was like, okay, he was Dolph. So. He was... hit 22 times in his forehead, temple, face, back, arms, chest, abdomen, chin, neck, wrist, and shoulder. Officers responded to the fatal shooting at 2370 Airways Boulevard, the site of Makita's homemade wow, at 1224 p.m. to find young Dolph unresponsive at the scene. Paramedics did everything within their power to resuscitate the rapper. But Dolph, who survived two shooting attempts on his That's what I'm saying, bro. You know the crazy part is? I remember this day. The day Dolph got shot. Well, not shot, but the day his, 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 his car got shot up a hundred times or he was at a mall or something like that. Man, I remember I was in this back when I had his shoes on the wall, like the Jordans on the wall. And I remember I was in the, uh, and I was in the closet making video. I was grinding. I'm in the closet making video. And I see the, the shooting come out with Dolph. And my first thought was, man, that nigga gonna make it. Them nigga, they, 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 they be getting shot out. The rappers get shot out of time, bro. These nigga don't ever die. That was my thought. As crazy as it sound, they done made this shit normal, bro. Like, man, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, dog, be alright. He gonna pull it through. Them nigga be getting shot out of time, bro. And then, I, then when the uh, academics, he started updating it. He was taking forever. Usually he'll come back from like stable condition. He kept saying, we don't know, we don't know. I was like, oh damn. I'm like, bro, you got to Hopefully my nigga dog straight. Then they came back and it was like he straight. Then he dropped a hundred shots and I'm like, so when they say he got shot this time, I ain't gonna lie. I was thinking like, he he gonna pull it through, but damn, bro. Life prior, succumbed to injuries, mainly those <clears throat> to his head, neck, and torso. His time of death was officially recorded by on-site paramedics as 12:39 p.m. The world was left in shock. Young Dolph wasn't only a rapper, but a father, a family man, a community activist, and an inspiration to others trying to find success chasing their dreams. Mm. The entire city gathered as his camouflage vehicle was removed, almost as a send-off to Dolph, proving his passing to be true. Now one clock stopped, but another was still ticking. Justice needed to be served, not only for Dolph, but for all the lives he touched that were hurting. The police presence was gathered in full force and the hunt was on. Three days later on November 20th, a break appeared to arrive in investigations when the getaway vehicle was located by authorities in the Orange Mound neighborhood. With the vehicle found, the owner could be tried down and evidence led to the woman whose relative borrowed the car and was robbed by the said shooter who then used the vehicle to take Dolph's life. The 22-year-old relative borrowed the car from the owner and made a quick stop at a gas station off Kirby Road just after 7.30 p.m. She informed police officers two men armed with assault rifles came up and demanded the car. One of them hit her in the face with the barrel of the gun. The owner who was called at the time of the incident states, oh, I really thought they were going to kill her. I mean, that's all I was thinking. I'm going to hear her die right here on the phone. She's going off, you know. She was standing up for herself and even at one point kept them from possibly putting her in the car with them. But luckily, they took the car and not her life. The case was growing stronger as the evidence stacked up. Hey, my father finally talking for I'm trying to really lock in. I'm trying on to focus right now. Another big break came when authorities released information on the suspect for the murder of young Dolph, Justin Johnson also known as the aspiring rapper 
straight drop. Investigations further revealed the cruel fate of what happened. Justin was once someone within the camp of young Dolph. Yeah, I'm about to say, because I have seen pictures. They say, look, bro, we in the background of Dolph. 15000 dollars reward was issued, and it was only a matter of time that incoming tips led authorities directly to Justin. The strategy worked in spooking him to make a public post on his Instagram account to declare his innocence by deciding to turn himself in at a particular time and date. Building your online business? Go to Wix.com and set up your... However, Justin used his post as a distraction to go on the run. Not only that, he was brazen enough to show no remorse for what he was being accused of and released a music video titled Trackhawk on the day he was to turn himself in. Justin taunted a <laughs> That boy tried to pull a tank at <laughs> He tried to pull a tank at And looking into his background, it was clear why. He was no stranger to the law. His legal issues spanned into multiple charges and arrests. In fact, at the time of Dolph's murder, he was already wanted on an outstanding warrant for violation of federal supervised release connected to a previous weapons case. Eyes further focused on Justin as investigators uncovered a past music video for his song, Going Straight In, which was shot at the location where the white Mercedes was found. Even if the video was now removed from YouTube, it was too late as clips already okay. fell into the hands of investigators. So, it shot at the location where the white Mercedes was found. Why would niggas take the, the Stolo to a spot they be at? Niggas would, niggas would abandon the Stolo at a, at a random area. You're not finna bring the, a stolen car to your crib that's linked to a murder fool. So, I don't know. The manhunt was on. Johnson was now wanted for first-degree murder, criminal attempt first-degree murder, and theft of property between $10,000 and $60,000. Six days later, U.S. Marshals captured Justin Johnson in Indiana, and with him, they apprehended Shundale Barrett, who officers concluded was assisting Justin with his escape as he was in the car at the time of arrest. Shundale was arrested and charged with accessory after the fact to first-degree murder. Hmm. With two now in cuffs, cops released information on another suspect, Cornelius Smith, who they had in custody since December 9th after his fingerprints were found inside the stolen vehicle. On January 19th, Justin Johnson and Cornelius Smith appeared in court for the first time before a judge in relation to the murder of young Dolph. Both men were given time to hire an attorney, but held without bond. On May 27th, they returned to court for a bond hearing, but was granted an extension to gather more evidence to present their case. July 1st arrived with no difference in the previous hearing. Michelle Shaw, the attorney for Cornelia Smith, told the court he was still in process of going through the 800 pages of written discovery along with surveillance of the crime. That What's that, 800 pages? <laughs> who, who writing all this, bro? Heard. Currently, their new court dates are set for July 18th and July 29th for their bond hearing and to present possible new evidence to the court. The world has been tuned in to see justice brought for young Dolph, but the process is slowly moving forward. The latest updates list two more individuals as persons of interest in Dolph's murder, 26-year-old Devin Burns, along with Joshua Taylor of the same age. One of the two, Devin Burns was apprehended on separate charges of aggravated assault and a theft of property. Hell, that was real color. According to an affidavit on June 6, 2021, a Jeep Grand Cherokee was stolen from Watkins Automotive in the 5400 block of Elmore Road. On June 30th, Memphis police recovered the vehicle on Deer Force Drive and towed the city lot where fingerprints were lifted from the passenger window and two chemically processed pieces of paper inside were the same as fingerprint impressions belonging to Burns. Even with his possible connection to Dolph's murder and his list of crimes, Burns has been reported to be out of imprisonment. Time will tell what were the involvement of Devin Burns and Joshua Taylor in Dolph's murder, if any at all. There have since been unfavorable updates in regards he to the previous that part of real life. Shundale Barnett. 
A warrant for his arrest is currently in effect after he was released from custody with authorities being unaware of his whereabouts and what appears to be a miscommunication or error in his release. His charges under the warrant have been updated to first degree and murder, what? accessory after this the fact, long the video, attempted fool. first degree murder, and theft of property. It has been approximately eight months since the world lost young Dolph. The pain is still healing and may never heal given just how much of a staple he was to the city of Memphis, the music industry, and the world. Even if gone, his legacy lives on in the impact he left on the world, his significant other, and kids. As the case runs its course, may justice be served. Hey, he took my nigga from his family, bro. So I say this be crazy, man. That's why y'all gotta, bro. That's why y'all gotta like. Make sure y'all get on the straight path in life, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all like, get y'all life together, bro. Don't be living life off of music lyrics and off of Instagram opinions and off of Instagram posts, bro. Get y'all life together, bro. Like I'm telling, they coming from, man. You watch if you watching my videos, bro. You you probably you rock with me in some type of way. You know what I'm saying? If you a young nigga, you probably look up to my content. If you my age, you probably just rock with me as a homie. You probably like my videos. Y'all probably like my entertainment. So with that being said, like, I'm somebody who got a little bit of an impact. So I'm gonna tell you right now, bro, just get your life together, bro. Don't even be trying to do the most. At the end of the day, bro, when you lead the world, you're gonna lead by yourself. And they still gonna have opinions after you gone. Man, just do what you do and get your life together, bro. I just told y'all in the last video, bro, get you a girl. If you a female, man, settle down, find you a decent man. You know what I'm saying? Start y'all life. Man, just get, just get y'all life together, bro. You know what I'm saying? Live you a nice, decent life and get out the way, man. You feel me? And keep God first, for sure. But anyway, long live dog, man. That's crazy. That ain't to my boy from his family. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. That's crazy. But my boy, left. he, he definitely left an impact on the, on the world, the music industry. A lot of young niggas telling young niggas to go get them some money, be self-made. I ain't gonna lie, cause that self-made ran with me for real. I remember back then, I ain't have a car. I was a young nigga, bum me dirty. I'm walking to the school to go hoop. I was just walking, bro, I was bored. I used to just walk to the school to try to talk to some female or something. I'm walking, playing dog. Same outfit too from the day before yesterday, just playing dog. Like, telling nigga be self-paid, be a ball. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna do that. It's crazy, man. But anyway, make sure y'all drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, join the family. If you made it to the end of the video, comment. We here. I just want to see me. I just want to see who rock with me. I'm gonna start doing giveaways. Go to them comments like, I ain't even gonna say too much. I'm gonna just pop out and see who really rock with me. Got a brand boy some over there. So no, they gotta study. They just get a man. Tell a nigga get this money. Ran through twenty, she keep coming. Fuck you, tell him I'm keep coming. Send cold deep in the fuck my stomach. I don't get a gun from Monday to Sunday. Don't know what he said, but it smell like a onion. Rounds in the gun, baby bitch keep coming. I said I got blue residents in my jeans.